brand new in DaVinci Resolve 19. We have some updates to the shape system in the Fusion page that I uh, am personally very excited about. They might seem like small uh, individually, but I think, ooh, there's some exciting things coming. I'm here in the Fusion page. Uh, we're gonna scope out the changes. Now, there are only three real things I want to specifically call out. Um, the first is the B spline tool, the S B spline tool, because there's a B spline tool. Now there's an S B S spline, B, B spline tool. <laughs> In the normal masking tools, we do have the polygon and the B spline tool. Um, we had the S polygon in a previous version of Resolve. Now we have the B spline tool. Uh, this is just a different way to build, I guess, previously masks, now shapes. You'll see I, I can draw this path and when I circle it up, it makes sort of this globby structure based on like the distance between those. So it sort of averages this position into this like super globby shape. Um, there haven't been a ton of ways outside of the B spline tool um, to get something that looks super organic. Um, so like this might have a use there. I'm probably not gonna use this a ton, um, especially compared to the next tool and that is S, text. Yay. <laughs> so we've had the uh, text plus tool forever, uh, which is just your basic text tool. It makes text, but now we have an X, S text tool um, that also makes text. <laughs> But this is text that can completely live and function inside the shape system. And that is important for a number of very important details, reasons. <laughs> but um, before I dive into S text, cause that is gonna be most of the video, I do wanna specifically call out um, on any of the core shape tools um, in their style now where you would set the color for those, you also have an opacity slider. This is something you didn't have before. You would have to render something out through an S render system. Um, you could kind of finagle stuff with like other options, but especially uh, opacity while maintaining color um, is now super easy, um, which is good news, especially when you bring in S text, because now you are able to build much more uh, com not necessarily complex, but much more functional tools uh, or complete systems natively, completely within the uh, uh, shapes system with only a single S render out. So um, the benefits to this could be pretty exciting. And to demonstrate, let me rig up one thing really quick. You see, I created this text tool and you can always pull up the size on this text tool, but say um, outside of the shapes tool, I just rigged up a real simple little graphic of the screen line and text on top of it. I could have it animate in, whatever. Say if after that, I wanted to have a master control for scale, right? I could, you know, always bring it down, make sure I'm previewing that, bring it down with no worries. But if I wanted this uh, larger and significantly larger. If I bring this above one, you'll see especially the text gets gross really quickly. This text is uh, rendered or rasterized based on this size parameter. And especially if it is smaller here, scaling it up after the fact makes it look bleh, gross. Now let's do something similar inside the shape system. I'm going to have uh, a green line, bring the te S text over it, bring this down, S text. And even if I go into this S text, pull down the size a whole lot, bring it right up to that line. Um, in 18.5 was the update that allowed you to preview these individually without an S render node, but I'm going to go ahead and preview this S render, um, just in case this is you know, important or necessary here. So, after this S merge, if I make an S transform, first thing I'm gonna do just for ease, uh, I'm gonna publish this X size, connect the Y size to that so it is a single slider. Remember outside of the shape system, when we scale this back up, it looked awful, but we are inside one system, right? It's not actually rendering this until we get to the final S render node. So now look how small it is, but on this S transform, if I pull up this slider, it's still looking pretty good, right? All the way up to 10. Oh, look how, even more, even more. Look how crispy and nice that text looks. And that that's how big it originally was. You can pull it all the way up and it looks 
great because it is not actually, it's not rasterizing, it's not rendering that until it gets through the entire process. You can have multiple assets scaling up and down and up and down, and at the end of that entire chain, you can scale them back up and you don't need to worry uh, about quality loss. That's the value of working inside a vector system like the shape system. That's a big reason this is useful, um, but another big benefit um, is has to do with the coordinate system inside the shapes layer. It can get complicated, but the coordinates system where things are located on your screen is actually different inside versus outside the shape system. So if you used the shape system for some like rectangles or graphics or whatever, and you wanted to connect text to that previously, you would have to render out the shape system and figure out a conversion to have the position of the shapes modify the position of your text plus outside of that shapes layer. It got confusing. So um, to demonstrate now, I'm gonna try to rig up, rig up something. <laughs> so I've got a new S text. I'll call this yay. Um, and then S rectangle, S rectangle. I'm gonna do some fun stuff. I'm gonna make an S Boolean node. And now I'm gonna connect two S rectangle nodes to that. The first being this big wide one and the second one being this like skinny one because on this S Boolean, I'm gonna change that from intersection to subtract and actually uh, control T to swap those. So we have this, uh, this window here subtracting from that window and that is important because I'm going to line up the skinny one right on the edge of that. So that um, at this point on this S rectangle, um, the height parameter, even though it is scaling both ways, that pushes, it's pretty much just like a height, it, it's like a height slider, but only from one angle. Bottom is staying stationary and the top is just being pushed. Okay, what would I do if I wanted to attach this text to the top of that line. I'll connect these to get an S merge and I'm gonna figure this out as I go. So this layout, first thing I'm gonna bring this height down to zero so I can position this text there first because then we're gonna modify it from there. Okay, so we have a starting Y value. And actually I'm gonna right click and modify these with an X and Y path. So now we are dealing with separate values for X and Y. Okay, here we have this value. I will make that an expression. Uh, I'm sure we'll be able to simplify this. Yeah. So this is its starting point. And then we want to add on s rectangle two dot height. Boom. And I think there's one more thing I'm going to need to be doing because if I go back and start pulling up that height, yeah, uh, the yay starts flying away. It is moving but moving way too much. You know why? Um, because we are only using half of this rectangle. So it is pushing away at a distance of both halves. We only want one of those halves. So if I go back into that uh, X, Y path now, I want to plus S rectangle height divided by two. Boom, and now it is tethered there. And however, uh, we either keyframe or animate this or put this into anim curves this value is gonna stay perfectly there. And there's a ton of cool math you can do. I've done some cool stuff in the shape system before. I've shown off some of that I've done for, for work I've done for other parties. There is a lot of untapped power in the shape system and uh, letting you plug text into that, um, I think we'll get a lot more people actively experimenting um, with this. Cause yeah, all of this just goes into an S render node and as many different elements, you're only spitting out one render versus if you just have multiple text elements, um, it is rendering each of those and then combining them and then with any other graphics. The speed of the shape system has been great for a while and being able to use text in there will be great. Um, another cool thing to note, the S text tool retains an incredible amount of flexibility of the text plus tool. I think pretty much the only thing that wasn't brought over is that on the shading elements, um, you can't blur these because like blurring isn't something that really happens inside the shape system. But very importantly, 
if you right click in this window, you have access to all your same modifiers from the text plus tool. Super importantly is the follower, um, which I also talked about in another video uh, that was just updated in Resolve 19, small update, but super powerful for like word by word animation, even external modifiers, which like I was blown away by. Um, I grabbed this number formatter. I have another kind of two videos all about that. But if you want to work with numbers, um, it's incredibly easy. You could build your own like local tools using this. It could be pretty, pretty fantastic. Yay. Or you could just have fun tying stuff together. Um, the Boolean tool, it can subtract. It can do a whole lot of other stuff. It can do this. <laughs> as simple as a boring text tool can be, the fact that this is part of the shapes tool uh, I think we'll get a lot more people exploring this. And I'm definitely gonna do more follow-up videos just on uh, the shape system because it's been kind of boring to talk about sometimes, maybe. I've done cool stuff, but with this, we'll talk about it more. But I have also something else uh, exciting to talk about um, because I went ahead and updated um, part of my recent pack of uh, graphs and charts for Resolve with this new system. So if you had previously purchased uh, my pack of Resolve graphs for data visualization and all of that, um, I'm going to uh, uh, be putting a new version of that. You should get an email if you are if you have previously purchased that. Importantly, that download will have um, the past version and the new version. So if you don't want to jump on the beta for 19 of of course, that makes sense. You're good to do so. Um, but if you're using 19 and you want to use some new tools or break them apart, see how they were built, or you know, test out like performance, see how that goes. So if you want to see S text in action, or if you've been looking for just charts and graphs, presets for DaVinci Resolve, link to that in the description. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs> I'll see you next time.